Hey everybody, Greg Kazillo from Kazillo.com. I just downloaded the beta of Adobe Lightroom 4 and this is my initial reactions. All I've done is install the program and import a couple of pictures and a couple of videos. That's all I've done so far. So I'm really interested to, to kind of search around and find some of the new stuff that's in here. Uh, if you're not used to using Adobe Lightroom, it's an awesome program. I've been using it since the very first beta, uh, was it six years ago, seven years ago, I don't know when it, when it originally came out, but uh, way back when, when it first came out, I knew this was going to be a huge program and that it was going to revolutionize the way that I manage my pictures. And you know what? It's still doing that. So the new Lightroom Beta 4 came out yesterday. You can go to labs.adobe.com and download a copy of it. First thing, make sure that you download the right version if you're on a Windows versus a Mac platform. Make sure you get the right one. And also make sure you choose the 32-bit version versus the 64. If you're on Windows 7 or Windows Vista, we're even XP, I think. You can hit the Windows key. That's this key right here, Windows key. Okay. And pause break. That's this key right here. Sorry my keyboard's upside down. Okay. Windows key and pause break and that brings you brings up this system panel and it tells you what type of system and uh, you know what operating system you have installed and right here system type 64 bit and if yours is 32 bit make sure you download the 32 if you are on the 64 you can install the, the 32 but i suggest sticking with the 64 because it'll allow lightroom to use more of the system memory and work a little bit more uh, efficiently is probably the best way to put it so let's talk about this as you see I've imported two sets of photos the first thing I noticed was it's really fast importing um, the first pass was probably a quarter of the time that it took Lightroom 3 to import and it was like bam there they are so that was really really good really nice and quick so let's start by going through menus um, I see this is different import photos and video uh, the import dialog box looks mostly the same. I can import pictures. Let's see if I can find a couple and show you how, how fast it is. Let's see. Let's find some other stuff from Las Vegas. There we go. Let's import this folder. And let's see how long this takes for them to show up. And 25 pictures already. There you go. 25 pictures in the folder. That quick. 50. So that's moving along pretty quick. Plus I have all kinds of other programs running uh, on my computer. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It's moving moving along nice and quick. All right. Uh, now, of course, all of my old settings from Lightroom 3 are going to work just fine. That doesn't mean that I had all of my uh, information saved. Okay. So let me, let me explain that a little bit. Um, Lightroom 3 has a catalog, and that's where all of your settings are saved inside of that catalog. Think of it as a card catalog when you were a kid at the uh, library, okay? And so that's where all your information is being saved. But by just importing these photos, that doesn't mean that I, all I did was do a straight import, and it's just reading the XMP data. So if the develop settings were saved in that XMP sidecar file, like this one right here obviously was, then it's going to import your other information, okay, your other develop settings, keywords, metadata, all the other stuff that, that's, in, that's associated with that file. But if, it's, if there isn't any of that information there, then it's not, it wouldn't import that. So um, what I suggest is, is uh, just as Adobe does, Start a new catalog, import some pictures, play around. Don't take your original catalog uh, and convert it because you really never know if it could destroy it. Or you know, if you are gonna uh, take the old one, maybe import it into the new something. Um, you know, just play with it here and there until you get the final one. You'll be much better off, you know, in the long run. So, importing is pretty quick. It's still making some thumbnails, but there are 249 pictures in there. That, that worked pretty well. Um, plugins seem to be about the same. Email photo. Wow. That's pretty cool. So I can automatically email this photo to myself. Wow, that's new. My photo. 
um, choose the size and I'm sure we can create a new preset yes we can create an email preset this is awesome with my watermark on it I'm just gonna choose that one I can choose the size oh this is great so much easier than exporting it and then redoing it and I definitely want to sharpen export send let's see if I get the email and it already knew that I had Outlook so that's good and I do run Outlook up oh, it's doing an export oh it composed the new email that's what it did okay good there's nothing wrong with that it didn't automatically send it because I might want to say hey here or some details about my photo you might want to talk about the photo so that's a good thing and I just need to insert my signature and away it goes nice okay um, good that uh, that they have that and let's see there's mm -hmm. the there's the email there's the picture with a watermark mm -hmm. nice I like it I like it okay that'll definitely save me some time um, plug-in manager I think we're about good there I don't see anything let's you know what let's check preferences let's see if there's anything different in in preferences I don't see anything there that all looks the same that looks the same that's the same okay nothing different there how about catalog settings uh, this is what I was talking about earlier with the XMP thing if you would like all of your changes written to the XMP files automatically then go ahead and do that this is like having a, an additional backup of your your catalog the only thing to keep in mind is not all changes are written to the XMP file there are a few things that are not written into that so that's why you need the catalog and possibly the XMP as a backup or if you're going between two computers you could possibly use that XMP for editing you know back and forth stuff like that um, alright that looks all the same you know what let's go into my develop panel let's pick a picture pick a photo here pick this one I'm going to develop, see what's going on in here. Still importing. Okay. That looks the same. Tone curve looks the same. I really need to do a video on cal camera calibration. Uh, lens corrections, haven't played with those lately. Most of this looks pretty much the same here. I need to read up on this a little bit because I really haven't. I, I just, I literally just downloaded this, installed it, and started this video. So this is all initial reactions here. How about some of these tools? I'm sure they're faster. I think there's, ooh, Moray. Wow, you can brush out, you can use your brush for sharpness, noise, and Moray. That is is awesome um, I like that I like that sharpness I think we could kinda do that before I can't remember though because I never use it but I could see it really coming in here yeah we could do sharpness with a brush because um, you can you can just sharpen like eyes and stuff like that and teeth or whatever or hair uh, eyebrows in a portrait which is really nice um, noise is nice to be able to brush out it's because sometimes you really only have noise in certain areas you don't want to apply that noise reduction to the uh, entire image having a slider there that's really awesome more a more a patterns are when you have uh, a very very tight weave and a tight pattern in like a, a suit jacket or something like that it has a really weird pattern I'll put up a photo of of a little bit of more a and it typically doesn't happen in most of the newer digital cameras is pretty well controlled um, but um, it's good that, that uh, they're jumping into that because it's great for product photography to be able to have that um, I used to deal with more a lot in older digital cameras red eye correction I never use that okay crop that looks good that looks about the same I like this I'm glad to see that more control that's gonna be awesome alright map what is map and book really GPS 
They finally put GPS stuff in here. That's awesome. Now, last year, I think I forgot to use my GPS thing on my photos. Otherwise, this photo would probably be coming up right now on the map. But that's really cool. I'm gonna really going to have to play with this and see if this is going to work out. Um, yeah, I can't wait to play with that. That's great. Um, the cool thing about this is, is I'm sure that it goes, that this map information goes right into places like Flickr with all that other map stuff. So that's perfect. Books. I'm guessing you can make little books, booklets right in here, which again would be a huge step in the right direction for Lightroom. What's going on here? Beta, 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 beta. Betas always have issues and could be a little slow. So, oh, you know what? I also have a lot of photos in there. Page limit is of 160 pages is reached. 169 photos. Oh, okay. In other words, it was uh, looking at all those photos that I had and, and separating them. I'm putting, putting them in here. Wow. This is definitely another one that I'm going to have to play with. Landscape. Paper type. Estimated price. In other words, I guess the cost of the book to me. Let's learn more. Let's open up a web browser. Um, oh, blurb.com is where they're being ordered through, I guess. Or um, you can export a PDF to be able to print it anywhere else. Um, presets. Wow, I'm really going to have to dive into this stuff. Oops. And figure all this out. Send book to blurb, cover, export to PDF. Huh. A lot of stuff here to play with, guys. Um, slideshow. I'm guessing that's probably normal. That looks like it's pretty much the same. I really don't see. Uh, what's create saved slideshow? Huh. Let's play with that. I don't do a lot of printing, uh, so I'm not sure if that would have changed or not. Uh, in fact, I don't do any printing in here at all. And web, same thing. I really don't use this a whole lot. I have, I did do a video on this a, a while back, but uh, I'll have to dive into this again too to see what's going on, see if it's if it's good, if it's bad. Create saved web gallery. I see that reappeared. Cool. Let's go back to the library. I think there's probably got to be some more hidden stuff in here somewhere. Um, normal publish services. Find more services online. Ooh, I imported some video. This was my camera RTFM video. Oh, whoa. Check that out. See, I'm moving. That's cool. It's actually showing the frames. Oh, you can play the video finally right inside of Lightroom. That's really cool. This was shot with a D3S. And I can actually just hit play, I guess. <coughs> Me coughing at the beginning of the video. That's really cool to be able to see this right off the bat. And you're going to see my screw up here. Because I screwed up the first time hey I said I intro. See? <laughs> hey everybody, Greg. That's really cool. What's this? Capture frame, poster frame. So I guess capture frame is like having a uh, just a single frame, like a screenshot of the video. Trim video. That's cool. So we can actually trim it right in, in inside of Lightroom. I wonder if there's anything else we can do with that. Video not supported in develop. Oh, white balance. Seriously? White balance, basic tone, exposure, contrast, white clipping, black clipping, saturation, vibrance, tone curve, treatment, split toning, process version, calibration. Wow, that's a lot of stuff that's supported in. in video here in Lightroom. That's really cool. Because that, that just means that it's going to make it super easy. Oh, look at that. 
Look how cool that is. Look how, oh, that's really, really neat. So, look how, uh, that's really cool just to apply that. In two seconds, I, I applied that change. I'm going to turn my volume off here. Uh, that's really neat. Just in two seconds, I applied that. That's really, really cool. Um, and I'm guessing then I can probably export it. Let's see what export features I have for a video. Um, oops. Adobe Reveal. wonder what that is. Include video. Oh, yeah, that's nice. You can choose the size. You can choose the your frame rates, your qualities. That's really good. And nothing else here really applies. I mean, I guess you be nice if there was a little bit of sharpening, maybe. But cool. So you can well, you would need to be able to export those changes. That makes sense. And hopefully, you would be able to take this video and then publish it directly. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if I could actually use this instead of uh, going all the way into Premiere and stuff like that to, to edit video? Mm -hmm. I think that'd be really awesome. Um, yeah, initial reactions of Lightroom for beta. Check it out, guys. Go ahead, download it, play with it. Uh, my suggestion is that if you are going to download this and play with it, to actually comment on their forum as much as possible. Um, if there's stuff you want to see in this program, guys, you need to say something. You really need to get that information out there and uh, tell them, hey, let, let's make these changes. Let's do this. Let's do that. What else you want to see? Um, this is cool. This is a really good start. And, uh, you know, this is only the beta. So you know that they're holding back some other features that's coming up, you know, when they finally do release the new one. Um, my estimate is probably going to be April or May that they would probably release the new. That's pr uh, that'd be my guess. But um, hey, you, you you never know. You never know. Well, might might be earlier, might be later. We don't know. But uh, this is a really cool start. So glad to see this. Nice job, Adobe. And um, hey, we'll see what happens. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. See ya.